Hi, Mark Reedy here. Just wanted to go over this uh, new spreadsheet that I created that will allow you to uh, grab some work order information from Tatum's and bringing it into QuickBooks um, with a third, the use of a third party tool. You can't actually direct, or excuse me, you can't actually import uh, normal spreadsheets directly into QuickBooks, uh, uh, well, at least based on work orders. So let me show you that. And um, the, let me start, let me show you first of all what you need to do in QuickBooks in order to make this particular spreadsheet work. And uh, we can set it up. We spreadsheets up a little bit differently if needed. Um, if you're current on your support and version upgrades, I can create those tweaks for you if, need, if needed. But so uh, let's see. The first thing I'm going to do is just go over one change you need to make or one addition you need to make inside QuickBooks. And that is in the item list. And so I've created three items here. One is called labor, one is called work order and one is called parts. So the parts is going to be like the part number or description rather and the labor is going to be the labor description and the work order is going to be the work order short description. The work order uh, item here is not actually going to bring in any uh, cost information. The cost is going to be based on labor and parts in this particular scenario. And so I don't have any customers listed in here and it actually it'll it'll match up the customers that you have in Tatums or it will create them um, in QuickBooks if they're not already created. It'll just do a quick uh, quick create of the, of the customer job. All right, so the spreadsheet, I'm going to go ahead and I've already downloaded the spreadsheet here. So I'm going to open this up and we'll click Enable Editing, Enable Content. So next thing I want to do is uh, get the path to the data file and you might need to change it if your data file isn't on a 32-bit machine and it's like on a network or you're on a 64-bit machine. So I'm going to go into Tatums and Tools and Networking. I'm going to right click and grab this path. Copy that. And then go back over to Excel and I'm going to click on the Data tab, Connections. This is how we connect all these uh, spreadsheets on the website to your Tatum's data. And then we click on Properties, and then Definition. And then I'm gonna highlight this area after the source equals and just up until the semicolon mode. So that whole little area right there. I'm gonna paste that path in there that I copied from Tatum's. So now we have the new path, all this. And now I'm just gonna click OK and click Close. So now we have the data, the uh, work order data from Tatums in this spreadsheet that we're gonna be importing into Excel. So this uh, Tatums database has like over 4,000 work orders. And uh, so I wanna just gonna grab a few of them at the end here. What I could do is I could just go over here to, and, and uh, filter this, say by date completed, unselect everything, and then just say, say I could choose 2014 and look at April. Um, well, let's try April. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, let's get something more. I want, I want labor also so you can see that. Looks like that one didn't have any labor on it. Try, oh, let's go to this 2014 here. Let's see what we got in January. Try those uh, three days there. Okay, so this looks good. We've got some uh, labor parts, work orders. You can see this single work order, 1727, has these items. And you can see where the item called work order just has a short description, but no quantity and no rate. All right, so just keep that in mind. And I can change that item name in Excel here uh, in the, in the actual, actual query that pulls from Tatums to say something else if you wanna have a different item name. Um, so basically, so I've got that. And what I'm gonna do is 
I'm gonna try it two ways and I've kind of been testing this so I'm not sure it's gonna work the first time um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just save this like this with this filter turned on and we'll see if this works and that if, if I can just limit it to this information here if not what I would do is I would copy and paste all of this from here to a new sheet and then save it all right so now I'm going to bring in this other program and it's called z-axis and you can just do a search on the internet for it z-axis z-e-d-a-x-i-s and so I've got this open and I'm on the 20 uh, or 30 day trial here so I'm going to click on QuickBooks desktop that's what I'm going to connect to and then I click this little button here that says connect to QuickBooks and I have QuickBooks open so that's typically how it will work and it looks like I've gotten connected and you can see where it says disconnect so it would disconnect if, if uh, you had to disconnect so I've got it connected you can see that it's connected to this one called test company up here if I wanted to connect to a different company I think I just have to open up QuickBooks open up that other company file and then it would connect to that one all right so now I'm gonna click on the import tab at the top it's asking me if I want to activate I'm gonna just run the trial I got 25 days left okay so now I'm gonna choose my spreadsheet that I'm going to import and this spreadsheet is actually in my downloads folder right now so I'm gonna go ahead and find that and it's this one right here so let's open that up it'll take it a second to kind of read the uh, Excel file down here in this section here where it says Excel options to choose a sheet okay so it looks like it's got sheet one right there so it, it's pre-selected sheet one it's got all that data and you can see that this actually has grabbed everything and I, I don't want everything so one choice here would be to unselect the select all and then just choose the ones you want to you want to import into QuickBooks but I'm going to try something else here let me move this out of the way so it didn't work by uh, just filtering this out so I'm going to grab all this information here so I'm going to highlight the top row down to the uh, last work order that I want to grab I'm going to copy that I'm going to go over here to sheet 2 and I'm going to paste that in alright so now I've got that information there basically the same stuff is on sheet one but that's just what's displaying on sheet one because the other stuff is all hidden because of the filters so I'm going to save this now and then I'm going to come back over to the z-axis and I'm going to click on refresh I might need to click on browse and then try to relink it okay so now you can see the second sheet is in there and that's the one I'm going to select so I select that and so now we only have those few uh, work orders uh, from this list over here that's in Excel so at this point i am so got everything selected all I need to do is uh, now if I'm going to go back over here to uh, QuickBooks and you can see nothing's in there right now so I'm going to go ahead and click on import and you got some other choices here that you can play around with like uh, validating and using auto numbering and uh, you can also well if the transaction already exists then you can duplicate or you can skip so and that might be or modify or append so if it found that particular work order number then you could have it modify or you could have it maybe append which means add more information to the to the work order all right so let's click on import we're going to click on I'm going to click on skip here that would be more I think that would be your normal choice so I'm going to click import Oh, I need to select mapping all right so um, I already had done a mapping before right here so Tatum's work order import 
um, I created that and, and basically that maps to the fields that I need. But if I, so, oh, add new mapping. That's what I want, not edit. I want to add a new mapping. So that's what you're, that, that's what you'll be presented with. And then I'm going to click to change this to uh, not work order. It is a invoice. I'm going to choose invoice. I'm going to give it a name. Let's call this test two in this case. And now we need to match up the the field names with the names in Tatums. So we only need a few. And I'm going to pause this for a second. I'm going to bring up a little mapping key. So hang on a second. Okay. So I'm bring I'm opened up uh, Z axis invoice import. And if we scroll down, I can see here the mapping that I need. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to look for these fields here. So um, let's see here. First thing I need is the customer. So that's going to be customer right there. And we're going to need the, we want the item reference. Okay, I wanted to make it faster. So. I've actually just brought up the one I did before. So these are how we're going to match it up. So we have the customer reference full name is going to be the customer that's from the spreadsheet over here. And when you pull the, open up these drop downs, it's going to show you what's inside the spreadsheet right there, right? So you can choose from those. All right. And then the transaction date is the date completed. The invoice reference number is going to be the work order ID. And we'll scroll down. And then we have other, I'm putting the equipment number in the other field. And the other field is uh, this line right here over to the right side of the invoice to the right of the FOB. And then the uh, item reference name that is uh, just called item. And uh, you can see here the item so it's going to be work order, parts, or labor. And then we've got the description. Uh, is description and then we have rate is rate we have quantity is quantity and that's it so those are the only fields that we're importing uh, for these work orders from Tatums so I'm going to cancel that and we choose this mapping again here okay so we've got that so at this point I think we're ready to import let's go ahead and click on import And you can see it's working here. It's got 15 records, and that would include the each each row, I think. So these are the comp the uh, customer names here underneath the name. Okay, so if the four records were added, four new invoices. So I can click on close on this, and we'll go ahead and move this out of the way. And if we were to look here, you could see how. This is one invoice, so that's one, two, three, four. All right, so that's a lot quicker than having to re-enter the stuff manually into QuickBooks yourself, um, obviously. So let me move this out of the way. We'll go back over to QuickBooks. And so now we can see the two invoices for Big Toe have been added. We can see the two for in-house have been added. And if we go over to the home screen and we click on the create invoices and we go back, we can see what they look like here in this particular view. Now I'm not seeing the, I'm not seeing the equipment number listed here. So it's possible that I could alter this to make the equipment number show up here. Uh, after the short descriptions, or I think it's because of the type of uh, invoice that it is. Let me go to formatting. Okay, so here's what I found here. Just pause it for a second. So if I go up here and choose the, the template, I'm just gonna edit this. So I'm gonna click on a custom data layout, and then I'm gonna go down here and here's where other is. So I'm gonna choose to see it on the screen and I'm going to choose to print it and I'm going to, going to choose default layout. It'll adjust the fields for me. And yes, 
I can give it a name if I want to. So I can just say other, or I could say equipment number. Depends on how you want to do it. So I'm going to click OK there. I'm going to keep it as equipment number instead of other. Looks good to hear. Okay. I'm going to click OK there. All right. So there's our equipment number that's been brought in. And so we can see, come back over here, and we can just scroll through all of these. We just got to make sure the template is, the default template is chosen uh, when you do your import. So let's see here, let's go back over here to, oh, it's the copy of the service invoice. That's the one with the equipment number on it. All right, so if you have any suggestions or need any help, let me know. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later.